When they will, I, I, I don't know. I think that's why McCall stopped printing stories. They didn't want to print that kind of thing anymore, but the question is what to print. Yeah. Again, those the novels are so different from the short stories. I see these short story writers sitting in the regular assembly line, flipping these things out. Gary. I think they affect the lives of the people whose lifestyles are reinforced by them. I don't know. Uh, I guess when I first started working on this, I got uh, more more upset about them and ranted at a lot of people about this kind of thing. And now I don't anymore. I see them as really very significant, though, because I see them as a kind of last stronghold that will not give an inch on what a woman is supposed to be like. Does it make a difference with 35 million readers? Does it make a difference with 35 million readers? I think it makes a difference, yeah. Because I think a lot of those people must be reading these stories, and I don't, I can't tell you what kind of a difference it makes. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think for anybody who wants to be a cultural anthropologist, <laughs> there they are. You can look at them and say, here's what some, some very widely circulating magazines in the 70s still believed a woman should be like. Now, you know as well as I do how hard it is to talk about the effects on the audience or to measure them. I, I think it is simply significant that all of this is still there and that it shows almost no sign of changing. In fact, McCall's, I think, is going backwards. They did a story in the November issue, November 1972, that was a real 50s story, the kind where the woman goes to the office party with the husband. He's a brand new TV executive, and she's going there to be shown off, and there are lots of questions about will she help him on his, uh, in his career? You know, does she look right? And at the end of the story, you find out that she did indeed look right, and uh, everything's going to be fine. Now that, I was really interested in that because um, in The Feminine Mystique, Betty Friedan is writing about mostly stories from the 50s, and that's the kind of thing she dealt with in there. When I started working with them, the ones I had from 67 onwards, there was nothing like that anymore. They got rid of it. And now, in McCall's, which is the most forward-looking of the group of four magazines, here it comes back again item called Sinclair's Wife. You know. I like the title too. <laughs> and so I don't know. I, I just I just can't see very much progress made there and I think they are they are significant for what they tell us about what a lot of people still think we all ought to be like. Susan. Yeah. I don't think I've ever read one where they broke up, no.
That, that's changed a little now. Now at the end of them, they sometimes send them to a sex therapist. <laughs> which is, I guess, this is the wave of the future. Forget the baby, but learn how to do it better. <laughs> uh, I, I, I really think that those things are, are, are changing somewhat, too. I think that the, the, the endings where they tell you what's, what's happened lately are, are not as optimistic as they used to be. They say that Jennifer and Herbert are going to try, but there are lots of adjustments to be made, and it doesn't look as, as hopeful anymore as it used to. Victor? Really? Oh. I don't think I've ever read one that wasn't capable of salvation, I guess. Pardon me, Dr. And it couldn't be saved. Mm hmm. Now the ladies' magazines would tend more towards Rose or Joan Kennedy, and uh, every once in a while, uh, Elizabeth Taylor, as a grandmother, appeared on the cover of one of them last year, I think. The, the Lennon sisters never. I, I, I think the fan magazines go to a different, a different social class than the ones I'm talking about. Yeah. You mean that would write for several of the magazines? Right. Well, the, the, the formulas are, uh, the people who appear in the formulas are very identifiable from one magazine to the other. That, that might happen, I suppose. But the, for example, the women in, in Red Book stories are the, are the youngest women, and they're the ones with the most children. That one I had about the 27-year-old woman in her fifth pregnancy, that could only appear in Red Book, which I think goes to uh, people who have a lot less money than the people who read the journal, because they're, the recipes are on how to make a, a full dinner with a quarter pound of hamburger and things like that. <laughs> uh, the, um, it, is, uh, it is in the journal where you find the most people who have the most money living pretty far out in the suburbs and being extremely well off, and it's in good housekeeping where you have the most moralizing all the time about fulfill yourself. Yeah, and so they're, they're quite different types from one magazine to the other, even though they work on all the same myths. So I don't know, I, I, I keep thinking this is a really rich field, I've read all these, I should sit down and start writing them now. <laughs> I've, I, I've seen them, of course, but I've, I've never studied any of the stuff in there. I don't, don't know what, really what it's like. I don't know if they print much fiction either, do they? Well, the child, really, too. Yeah, both of them. Yeah. 
I, I think that it's that they're they're really intrinsic to the magazine. After all, if you want people to concentrate on the things for the home that are being shown in that magazine, you have to have those women at home, because there simply is not time, say, to buy the ladies' home journals, uh, uh, needlepoint and rug hooking projects that cost about forty-five dollars a throw, and do them if if you are not in the home. It it just has to be that way. And so I think that uh, they they don't want to advocate people leaving the home. Good afternoon. Before we begin today, I'd like to remind you of today's other events on pop culture. At 4.30 at Rippey's Orchard today, there will be a discussion on science fiction led by Ivor Rogers. And tonight at 8 o'clock in the sunroom, there will be a topic, or there will be a panel discussion um, featuring Stan Lee and David Manning White and Arthur Berger on the comics. But for now, our speaker is Mary Helen Dunlop. And she's an instructor at the English department here at Iowa State. Mrs. Dunlop claims that she's just a typical housewife and mother. And like most typical housewives and mother, she's fascinated with women's magazines. But she carried her fascination a little bit farther, onward and upward into the realm of pop culture, by studying the fiction in the women's magazines. And I'm sure she has some interesting things to tell us. Thank you, Barb. Uh, I wanted to start out by telling you a joke, as speakers do, but like your average woman, I can't tell a joke right, and so I'm just going to start right out talking and forget the joke. 